Hello. All right, so today we are going to talk about regression, more specifically simple linear regression. Now this is a technique that we can use to analyze data when our interest is to determine how two quantitative variables sort of vary together. Um, when you have a quantitative response and a quantitative explanatory variable, uh, usually the goal is to predict or uh, predict values of the response or create a model uh, to model some response. And so the data set that we're going to use is called the Longley data set. And this has some information uh, about the United States and it is over the years 1947 uh, to 1962. So I will fully admit this is a bit dated, um, but it does have data that shows a trend that um, is really nice to see, especially when we're just starting out. So go ahead and locate the Longley data set, import it. And it does have uh, numerous variables. We're only going to focus on two of them. So the two variables that we will use is this GNP. This is gross, gross national product in millions. And then uh, the other variable is the number of employed in thousands. And again, this is for, for 1946 to 1962 data. Uh, all right, the goal here um, our purpose, our mission is to try and use GNP uh, to predict the number of people employed in the U.S. Um, so based on GNP, are we able to make some type of prediction about our response? So things to keep in mind, since I want to predict the number of employees uh, for a given GNP, that tells me employed that variable is our response variable and then what we're going to use to make the prediction that is going to be our explanatory variable and it's important to know how we're uh, looking at the data because that's going to dictate how our graph looks right so we got to make sure to get that situated get that clear in our minds. So the first order of business, right, whenever you have a data set is you need to get your eyeballs on there, right? Got to make a graph, got to get your summary statistics uh, in front of you. And so one graph that I can use to uh, look how two variables vary together would be a scatter plot. Now the scatter plot uh, is sort of built like a, uh, a function that we've seen before, histogram, box plot, where we have the name of the plot that I want to create uh, and then I have these arguments inside of it which then creates the graph that I'm, I'm after. So in this plot function, the very first thing that I do need to list is uh, my model. So my model includes two variables. The first thing that I need to list is the name of the data set dollar sign and the name of the response variable because again essentially the flow is y tilde x. So y is our response and then I'll need to have a tilde and then x is our explanatory variable that goes to the right of, til of the tilde. So I'm going to use the name, oops, name of the data set longly. Dollar sign allows me to pull out variables and using my up and down arrow key I am going to select employed which means I don't really have to move every anything, hit enter, or again, I can just simply type out all of those letters so that our studio knows that I need the employed variable from the Longley data set. So now uh, we type in the tilde, and again, if you need a reminder of where that's at, it's not a very popular uh, key stroke. Uh, I shift and then right above the tab key, right to the left of the number one button, uh, is the tilde. So I got that going. And again, name of the data set, dollar sign, and name of my explanatory variable. So I hit enter, and there we have uh, our two variables listed in the correct order. So now um, I just fill in the important pieces of a graph, which are titles, and then I can add a few other arguments just to make it a little prettier than the super basic one that we get um, from our studio. So a main title that would work for this example might be something like number uh, of employees in US versus G. NP. Oops, that is not a G. 
GNP. There we have it. That's a good title if you ask me. It describes what we are looking at. Now the X label uh, would go on the X axis and it corresponds to the explanatory variable. Uh, I overemphasized all the X's on purpose because they're kind of all together, right? The explanatory variable goes on the X axis, which in this case uh, is the gross national product. And then it's always good to include some units and this was in millions. All right, that is our X axis. And then we have our Y label. Now our Y label corresponds to the uh, response variable and that was a uh, number of people employed and that was in in thousands okay all right so next uh, is a couple of other arguments that I wanted to throw in there again just to kind of make this look a little bit nicer uh, PCH is a point character. So it is a number that corresponds to a symbol that I want to use for all of the points on the scatter plot. Um, 19 is a pretty typical um, point. Uh, I use it. It is a filled in circle. Um, you can, you know, investigate what the other symbols are. For example, 17 is a triangle. Um, zero is a, um, a square that doesn't have any filled in color on the inside. So it's just a kind of a, an outline of a square. So play around. Um, these PCH numbers go from zero to 20. And so you can get creative with the symbols that are used. Uh, color col argument that is going to just have a color for the points um, and since we're using a filled in circle which is that 19 uh, you know maybe we'll go ahead and say this is going to be a blue scatter plot all right i filled in everything that i need so i'm going to go up to line 11 that's at the beginning of my function i can either hit Control enter on my pc's keyboard or hit run up here in the top right corner of my script window and there we have our uh, scatter plot see looks to me like this is a very linear trend uh, I say linear because this is a straight line um, overall these points seem to follow a straight line in a positive direction positive because as I increase values on the x-axis values on the y-axis tend to be increasing as well so it's going uphill from left to right a negative trend would be going downhill from left to right so if most of my points were up here in the top left corner and as i increase x values i would be going down that's a negative trend this does look like a very strong trend because these points seem to very obviously follow a straight line Right, it's obvious because they're really close together. You know, these points are are scattered a little bit, but not too much. Right, these points are really tightly packed along that straight line. So I would call this a strong, linear, positive trend. Now, occasionally it's hard to really determine, you know, how strong is strong. Um, so we do have this number called the correlation coefficient, and it is a number that des describes the strength and direction of a linear relationship. So first order of business, you have to make sure you have a linear trend because I could calculate the correlation coefficient uh, for any two quantitative variables, um, but it's meaningless if the trend isn't linear. Um, so I need to make sure that the trend is in fact linear, which it does look like. So that allows me to use the correlation coefficient to then describe the strength of the relationship. Generally speaking, negative numbers are associated with negative trends, and the correlation coefficient only goes between a negative one and a positive one. So positive numbers correspond to a positive trend. Now, a negative one and a positive one both indicate perfectly linear relationships. Those points are perfect perfectly placed on a straight line. Um, now, as you kind of 
reach the center or zero as you are approaching zero on either the negative side or the positive side, um, zero indicates a weak or in fact zero indicates no relationship at all, a zero relationship. So numbers that are very small, either small negative or small um, positive, 0 0.01, 0.1. Those are very weak relationships. So let's go ahead and find out what the correlation coefficient is for our trend so that we have a little bit better um, sense of how strong of a relationship we actually have. Now the correlation function, COR, requires two things. We need the explanatory variable and the response. Now the correlation between two quantitative variables um, is just a measure of the two variables together, so it really doesn't matter what you place first. Um, so you can place the explanatory variable here or uh, the explanatory variable here. It doesn't really matter too much. Now I'm following the lab activity that is provided to you all, so I'm going to go ahead and follow that. Gosh, I don't know what I was trying to type there. So let's go ahead and type out our explanatory variable first. So the data set name, dollar sign, GNP, and the two variables need to be separated by a comma. So don't forget that if you're typing in it in yourself. And again, the Longley data set, dollar sign, and employed. So now that I have all of that filled in, I'm going to go ahead and run that line of code and we get the correlation coefficient. So in this case, correlation coefficient of 0.98. Holy smokes, that is just about one. So as we can see visually, there is a very strong relationship because those points are pretty close to each other. The correlation coefficient also agrees with that because this is almost a positive one, indicating a very, very strong linear positive relationship.